spirit. Hallelujah. But we are chosen, we believe to flow in the spirit. So I believe the man of God is ready to bring the word. Hallelujah. The ground has been broken. Our hearts are ready. Our head ears are ready to receive what God has for us on today. We introduce and present the senior pastor of Chosen Ministries Christian Center, Pastor Dwayne M. Shaw Sr. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Truly we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for this the Lord's day. Praise God. Thank God for all that has already taken place in the service. Amen. Truly the Lord has been moving by his spirit. Praise God. Moving by his spirit. Amen. Praise God. If you don't mind, just take a moment and just begin to tell the Lord something wonderful. Worship Him in your own way. Just begin to magnify the Lord. Just thank Him. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your magnificent and awesome power. We give you glory today, God. There's nobody like you, God, in all the earth. So we bless your wonderful name today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you today, God. We honor you. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Look on our screen, praise God. Thereby we may read the word of God as a family. Also, before I read, uh, we will be uh, talking from Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Also, with Hosea 10, 12. For those of you that like to frame the text, put it in context, take it home and study it for yourselves. But for our time today, we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6, 7, and 8. Praise God. The word of God. But thus I but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make grace abound toward you. Somebody say for me. Amen. That ye all always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that hath dispersed abroad, he that giveth to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. I mean, I'm not ready an extra verse, but I wanted to throw that in there. Because we're going to talk today from the subject, the sovereignty of the seed. <laughs> the sovereignty of the seed. And, and, and as I preface this, uh, this, this sermon, just want to give a little clarity on the seed. That a seed has everything within it to produce what God intends for it to produce. The, the seed in and of itself is like a supercomputer. <laughs> Everything that that seed is ever going to be is inside of it before it gets planted in the ground. All right, but I must warn you that the seed cannot produce anything until what's inside comes on the outside. <laughs> As powerful as the seed is in and of itself, it cannot produce anything until what's on the inside transitions and transforms and comes on the outside. Are you following me? Yes. I also would, would let you know that you are a seed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Not only you, but what you dare to produce yes. is a seed. I want you to know that it does not matter what they look like, how they respond. You are required. It is your reasonable service to plant seeds here in this earth realm. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. It is your job to plant seed in the earth and let God do what? Get the increase. Amen. Praise God. So let us pray. Let us go. Let us go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. We ask you. To maximize this time and speak to us out of the volume of your holy book. Words of life, clarity, authority, and conviction. Father God, we stand at the ready to receive the infallible truth in your word today. Feed us till we are spiritually satisfied. Oh, Father God, we are so ever grateful for the move that has already taken place in this service today. Yeah. Oh, Lord, we thank you. For how you have already moved, Father God. We thank you. How you have already touched hearts and minds, Father God. So now at this appointed time, we ask you, God, to speak. And so much, Father God, that I decrease and you will increase until there is no more I, only the Christ that's on the inside. Have your way. Let he that hath an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise because you alone are worthy. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence, in God's presence. Thank you, ushers, for your kind and friendly service. You may rest off of your feet. Amen. I'm a play, I'm a play Uncle so, beloved, the unmistakable thing in our text is reciprocity. 
and a resounding message of seed time and harvest. Beloved, there is a direct correlation between the amount that's given and the amount that is received. The text is not just addressing the act of giving, but also the motive behind the giving. Yeah. The attitude of the giver will generate the abundance or the lack thereof. Praise God. Now, as we investigate the text just a little bit further, I, I also see that God is talking about enduring until we reach our season to pull in a harvest. And another thing rises to the surface, and that is of winning. However, he prefaced winning with sowing. Uh, the, the spiritual principle of seed time and harvest has always been, is here now, and will always be. Amen. But he proceeds winning with working. Somebody say, I have to work. I have to work. Before I win. Before say it again. I have to work. Before I win. Now, you, if you sow something, you have the right to receive something. Amen. You don't just sow and don't expect for something to come back up from your sowing. Sometimes we miss it that we just sow out of obedience or sow out of protocol. But I want to update those files for you today to let you know that there is sovereignty in the seed. And if you are sowing something, you have all right to expect to receive something in return. Praise God. And it may not be what you are expecting to receive. You may sow money and expect to receive money, but God may return your blessing in some other area or some other avenue. Praise God. And if you get the mindset and say, Lord, anyway you bless me. Mm. Oh, I wish I was in church this morning. Anyway you, anyway you bless me, I'll be, I'll, be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. Amen. We can't just start sowing and say, God, this is my list of what I want in return. Oh, God said, if you sow, let me handle what you reap. Mm -hmm. How many know God can give you more than what you can give yourself? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, the Bible tells us he knows his thoughts that he has for us. So he knows what we need. We just know what we want. That's right. Amen. But if you get the attitude and the mindset, I'm going to sow everywhere and expect to reap anywhere. anywhere. Okay. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to reap, but I just know that a harvest is coming. Praise God. All right. All right. Amen. And I want you also, while we are introducing this text, to take your mind off of sowing just being money. All right, all right, that's right. Money that's is right. the least of it. Praise God. Right. Right. Yeah, we need money to run the church. Yeah, we need money to live life. But there are other things that you as a seed can sow in this world that will outlast any amount of a check you can write or any amount you can swipe on your card. God is looking for somebody to put some skin in the game. Okay. Put some skin in this earth. You want to be able to sow wherever you go. In fact, beloved, anybody that's Holy Ghost filled ought to be sowing out of a habit. Yeah. You Holy Ghost filled and God is living on the inside. You can't help but sow everywhere you go. You, you walk into Walmart and people see you. There ought to be a puddle or a drip from their nose in such a way that you just sow without actually trying to sow. Oh, come on somebody. That, that anybody that is Holy Ghost filled will sow by virtue of their lifestyle. When people see you, they ought to see a form and a facet of God here in this earth realm. They may never read a Bible, but they will read you. Ask the neighbor, what will they see when they read you? What will they see when they read the book of your life? Will they see God here in this earth realm sowing? Watch this. You can sow just as much by what you won't say than you will by what you will say. You can sow just as much by where you won't go and what you won't do by the places you do go. That's right. But God is looking for some fanatic sowers. God is looking for some radical sowers. God is looking for people that get up in the morning and say, what kind of seed can I drop in the earth today? To ask your neighbor, are you a seed sower? Are you a seed sower? Ask your neighbor, wait, 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 wait for an answer, wait for an answer. If they didn't even look at you, that was the wrong neighbor, praise God. You ought to know that you got sitting beside somebody that don't mind sowing. Amen. And, you, and we ain't talking about 
about sowing seed in church. Everybody got a seed to sow in church. Praise God. The revelation in our text, beloved, is that we are living in a time now where it appears that evil has taken over the land. I want you to know something that we are experiencing hell manifesting itself right here in this earth realm. All right. I don't know how cognizant you are of the fact that hell has risen in this earth and now we are experiencing demonic manifestations and we are experiencing spiritual wickedness and evil that's sitting up in high places that are trying to exert their control and dominion over this earth realm because they know that God gave dominion to man. He told us to subdue this earth, replenish, and multiply. But now we are finding that the enemy is strategically positioning himself by our acts yes. in this earth. Yes. Yes. We're finding that there is police brutality and cricket politicians and demonic realm is opening up and we are now actively and aggressively promoting promiscuity and promiscuous behavior. Mm -hmm. We are finding now that there is a thing called CERN that has dug into the earth and is opening up a portal, praise God. How many know there are some things we just should not bother? There are some things we are just should leave well enough alone, but now we are finding that they are building machines that are opening up demonic portals and now they're trying to clone a human person and a soul and now they are finding ways to manipulate and maneuver around God's first creation or God's greatest creation and now beloved you don't know who you're talking to and what you're talking to when you walk around I know the Bible talks about we entertain angels unaware but let me show you something you may be entertaining a devil and a demon unaware. You may be entertaining AI unaware because the enemy is trying his best to reproduce what God has done. And I told you all that to tell you that it can take us out of revival mode and put us in survival mode. It can take us out of the place where we are constantly sowing because we are seeing benefits from our sowing. But can you sow when you don't see any benefit from your sowing? Can you still be when that person has gotten on your last nerve, can you still go and study the word knowing that the end is near? Can you still get a revelation and tell a dying world that God is still in control when they're turning around and saying, no, Satan is in control? Can you still put in time and let somebody know by thoughts, words, or actions that God is going to get the final say? Don't go in survival mode, but And your life 
and your ministering. There's a difference between ministry and ministering. Amen. Ministry happens in church. Ministering happens in, okay. I want you to view all of these things as we go through these points in the sermon as seeds sown. That will help you to know that when you come in contact with somebody, it is your obligation to sow some type of seed. Number one, God is still working. Amen. Say it with me. God is still working. God is still working. Romans 8.28 tells us that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. I'll be preaching with that. He'll be mad at you. You're going to be productive and powerful. You've got to plan and then plow. Somebody say plan, plan. and then plow. Yeah. plow. You have to realize that even in the best laid plans and thorough plowing, that problems are going to be planted in the pathway to your promise. These problems don't just come up, they are planted intentionally to deter, assassinate, and terminate the power of your production in your life. Because believers should be productive. Even with the problems that you have, you've got to know that God is working those things out for your good and for his glory. And also, those things that seem adversarial in your life have actually been employed by God to work for you. Let me say that again. Those things that seem adversarial in your life have actually been employed by God to work for you. All right. Your problem is your employee. Oh, Y'all gotta follow me. Y'all gotta follow me. <laughs> that issue you have is your employee. <laughs> because God employed it to elevate you to warrior status. <laughs> you may think that you're, you're working for your problem. It's the other way around. That, that problem is working something out of you so God can put something in you. Uh, that problem, and you got to know that trouble don't last always. I know y'all heard that before. Trouble don't last always, so your problem has an expiration date on it. Somebody say, thank God for the expiration date. But won't be unto the man or woman that does not learn the lesson before that problem expires. <laughs> Amen. Because it may expire, but the enemy is just going to create another name and another patent to send it back around again. And the same problem you had last year, even though you made the New Year's resolution and rather and declaration, that same problem is going to come back around this year. Except this year is going to have on another kind of dress. Except this year is going to have on another type of tax code. Except on this year it's going to look a little bit different. But ain't nothing new under the sun. If you don't pass it the first time, you can expect it to come. But you use that employee. Get everything, squeeze every little bit you can get out of that problem and learn the lesson that God wants you to learn. Because it's working for you. Somebody says, working for me. It's working for me. Have you ever looked back on a problem, not while you were going through it, but have you ever looked back over your shoulder at, at some of the things you've been through and just thank God oh, yes, that that yes, was yes. then? That's right. Anybody ever look back over your shoulder and just begin to thank God what, what he brought you through? It, it, it's yes, difficult yes. sometimes to thank God while we're going through it. Uh -huh. Because while you're going through it, you can't see the forest for the trees. That's right, that's right. While you're going through it, you can't see the top of the mountain because you're busy climbing. But every now and then, you want to look back over your shoulder and, and, and just see some of the things that God has delivered you from. I bet you begin to praise Him. That's right. I bet you begin to thank God. I, I bet you begin to say, like Lady Shy said, that it could have been me and it would have been me and it should have been me. Oh, let me help you. What about the cases when it was you? Never lose a heart. He said, I never. 
never lose a harvest. Uh -huh. You give yourself that a seed, you know that God will not, won't allow anything to separate you from his love. That's right. Oh my God. The moment that the enemy suspected that God was going to do something great in your life, he began to plant tares to grow up with the wheat. With the intention of it aborting God's call in your life. Even from early childhood, if you can think back, and, and some people wonder, why did I grow up this way? Why did I have to go through this early on in my life? Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? Why did Mama allow Uncle John to do such a thing? Why mm -hmm. did all these things happen to me before I ever knew who I was? It was because the enemy was trying to attach a proclivity to you. He was trying to attach a generational curse on your life and a proclivity to fall and to fail and to walk around now with a chip on your shoulder. You've even come into the church and gave your life to the Lord, but you still have a chip on your shoulder. And you are one conversation away from busting somebody in the mouth. You, you saved and sanctified and filled with heaven. I know, I know where I'm at. You sanctified Amen. and filled with the Holy Ghost. But you one conversation from slapping somebody from the east to the west. You love the Lord and you won't take it back. But it won't take much at all for somebody to rub you the wrong way. And you forget everything that you have been taught and told about how good God is. Turn the other show, other cheek, I wish I would. And now you're saved in the same proclivity that you had. The same chip on your shoulder, you done brought that into the church. And now you love the Lord, but you hate everybody else that love the Lord. You love the Lord, but you hate the people that are there that want to love the Lord too. So you missed the first lesson. You missed the first lesson. You missed the first lesson. The first lesson. Love your neighbor as you love. Yes, yes. Oh, tell me you love God. And you roll your eyes at your brother and your daughter. Lord mercy. I've heard Deacon Hillier say, up until now, I 
I have not been what I wanted to be up uh -huh. until now. Why up until now? Because the enemy saw the prayer that went up and sent demons after those prayers. Uh -huh. And now there's warfare or was warfare in the heavens for what Grandmama been praying about you. Mm -hmm. Grandmama saw that she looked down her bloodline and saw craziness and chaos. And she said, the buck stops here. Uh -huh. The buck stops with me. Yeah. This bloodline curse will not go a day further yeah. in this blood. I want to see anybody in here today that can say the buck stops here. Yeah. The buck stops here. I look back and I saw some chaos, but the buck stops with me. It won't go any further. It won't mess with my babies. It won't mess with my finances. It won't mess with my marriage. It won't mess with my grandchildren. The buck stops here. The buck stops God 
God's work and putting him in some mysterious realm to where God has to work everything out. The Bible says all things work together, which means you are included in the all things. That if God is going to work in the earth realm, somebody say he's going to use me too. He's going to use me. Oh, y'all didn't believe it. Y'all didn't believe it. Y'all want to point somebody out and say, God is going to use you because you don't believe God can use you. But y'all point to yourself and say, God can use me too. God can use me too. He can use me too. You sure can. Watch this. In fact, because of what I've been through, puts me at the front of the line for God to use me. <laughs> because of what I've been, it puts me at the front of the line for God to use me. I know how they think because I thought like that. I know what's going on in their mind because I was a seed planted behind enemy lines. I was the rose that grew from concrete. Let the enemy tell it I would never be anything. But I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace. He kept me. So I wouldn't let go. I tried to let go. I didn't even let go sometimes. But he reached down. Thank you, God. I planted that girl with a purpose. And I refuse to lose. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. Glory. God is still intentional. Yes. Everything he does, he does on purpose. Somebody say on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> Bible says in Jeremiah 29. And 11, that for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Yes, yes. Thoughts of peace yes. and not of evil to give you a future yes. and a hope. Yes. God is so into uh -huh. his purpose for you mm -hmm. that he not only ordered your steps, mm -hmm. he's walking you through the steps you can't take for yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything that you've been through had God's seal of approval on it. Amen. To say that you went through something that God did not already know about would be to snatch him of his sovereignty. That's right. Uh -huh. To say that something happened to where God had to backtrack and try to fix it after it happened is to rob him of his omnipotence. Mm. But to say that God knew God allowed and God prepared a way of escape to give you a different perspective or viewpoint on where you've been. You've got to know that you survive and still have your mind intact. You're still thriving because God has been with you. God does not override the principle of sowing and reaping. He just sowed life so that eventually you would reap like the Bible says, the enemy coming not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life. life. Not just any type of life, but have life. Oh, 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 oh there you go. Life more abundantly. Yeah, that's right. Beloved, if God has purpose for you to win, then no weapon formed against you, okay, will prosper. Watch this. The bigger the purpose, the bigger the giant. The bigger the giant, the harder it's going to fall. God has given you a big purpose. You can expect big opposition. God has given you big opposition. You can expect big weaponry to knock that opposition down. That the opposition simply comes as a sign that you're about to cross over into the land of greatness and the land of better. Anybody desires to be better today? Amen. Anybody desires to be better today than you were yesterday, yeah. better tomorrow than you were today? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. 
God's plan for you intentionally included the enemy's plots against you. Let me say that again. God's plan for you intentionally included the enemy's plots against you. Because what God plans for you, the enemy has to come against what God planned for you. But when he comes against what God planned for you, gives God the opportunity to show you, the enemy, your friends, your frenemies, and your enemies, how big God really is. Now, if God, God could just make ways out of no way without any trials or adverse things coming our way. But would you appreciate God if you never went through anything to get to God? How can you appreciate healing if you've never been sick? How can you appreciate abundance if you've never suffered lack? So God allows it that when it comes, and watch this, he loved for somebody to give him glory for what they have. All right, he yeah. loved for somebody to walk off the car lot with a brand new car, zero down payment, 25 miles on it, and don't blame or don't give account to their credit score or their bank account. They say, God, you've been so good to me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, God, you've been so, so, so good to me. God loves to be able to bless somebody with a beautiful house and a picket fence and a four-car garage. And, and, and they, the first thing they do in the house is fall on their knees and say, Lord, you've been so good to me. Yes. Before they plan the party, before they buy the liquor and invite all of their crazy friends to come tap their new house, they bless the Lord for the opportunity to have that That's house right. in the first place. God is ready to bless somebody that's going to give him glory for being blessed. I hear what I'm saying to you. Maybe the reason why God ain't done it for you yet uh, is because you got the party planned uh, before you even get the house. God said, don't throw no party in here. Uh, this is the Lord's Out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. 
That don't mean you walk around and feel like you're about to curse and gotta close your mouth. Because at that point, it's too late. Right? At that point, if you feel like you gotta curse, it's already there. But let me help you. Somebody say, go back a little bit. Go back a little bit. Go back before the feeling come up and pray that the feeling. Ah, oh, there you go. Pray that the feeling doesn't come up. If you already there and you feel better worried about the spirit out, it's already in your spirit. Because you can't accidentally cuss somebody out. I know y'all said I know y'all I, I didn't mean to cuss her out. She just she just said she said what she shouldn't have said. But you can't accidentally cuss nobody out. The words from your mouth and the meditations of your heart are one and the same. That's right, that's right. All right, come on, bring it. Go ahead now, go ahead now. Life and death are the power of the tongue. Make it plain. Make it plain. So you can speak life or you can speak death. That's okay, so let me show you this. You don't know what's in you uh -huh. when hard times hit you. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Character's not made in the fire. That's right. Character's exposed because of the fire. That's right. ah. <laughs> A man driving down the road. Hits an ice pocket. The car starts spinning around. And he says, Oh, my God. The next word out of his mouth is what is a direct correlation of what's in his spirit. The same man, 10 years later, and now his prayer has changed. Got rid of the old man and taken on a new man. Can hit that same ice pocket, mm -hmm. spin around with the same, the same, okay. spin around with the same, and he can say, "Oh Jesus, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, have mercy," because out of his heart did the mouth speak. So the next time that woman at Walmart can't count, next time that person cuts you off in traffic, next time that boss says something that's not pleasing in your sight, watch what comes out of your mouth. Watch what wells up in your spirit. There you go. Because God don't want to fix us cosmetically. To where we have to fight back emotions and feelings of doing wrong. God wants to fix us inside. Somebody say, Lord, work in me. Lord, Lord, Lord. God wants to work in us to where those feelings and those thoughts don't rise up in us. Uh -huh. We can be a 30-year Christian still struggling with an attitude. We can be 30 years saved and still be bitter and acidic to people. Still love the Lord. But we have never addressed or confronted that thing that causes us to be like that in the first place. But God intentionally set the universe in motion by words of power. Then he created us with the modicum of that same power. And we can set our world in motion by what we say. So when next time you say, my head is killing me. <laughs> Next time you say it, they don't got on my. Next time you say I'm barely getting by. Next time you call your kids crazy and bad. Next time you tell that baby you just like your no good daddy. What you expect is gonna happen? Those words are going to find you, and it's going to happen like you say. Look, oh my God, there is a law, the law of confession, where you simply say what God has already said. That when you speak life, you can expect life to return. That when you speak the holy scriptures into the atmosphere, the will of God, according to the word of God, you can expect that the will and the word of God to collide in spectacular fashion and manifest, somebody say, in my life, in my, in my, life. my house. In my house. Yes. 
but you cannot say what the enemy wants or how you see or feel and expect something different to occur. In fact, when we speak death, we simply confuse our own souls. Because our souls know the power we have when we speak. And your soul is wondering why you hate him so much that you speak death all the time. And one thing that we are getting by slowly are silly superstitions. Silly superstitions, I call them, is simply witchcraft that we have adopted from our mama and our grandmother and great-grandmother and great-grandfather and they told us some things that we use as practice. We say them as jokes now, but it really is witchcraft. How many know it don't matter if you find a penny on heads on New Year's Day? If you were broke going into the New Year, guess what? I don't know, the only reason why a woman's pocketbook shouldn't be on the floor is because you don't want it dirty. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know, you can walk by a mirror and break it, walk by another one and break it, walk by another one and break it, and you won't get seven years bad luck. Right. You may get cut from breaking the mirror. <laughs> Silly superstitions. Wishing upon a star. Wishing upon something that lost its light and fell from its place. My, my, my. Now, I'm Make reminded point. of what happened in, in Luke. Make point. When he said, I saw him falling. Do you see the correlation? Yes, yes. Black cat will cross your path and you nervous the rest of the day. Step on a crack. Break your mama back. <laughs> Silly superstition. Now, I'm going to say something that y'all ain't going to like. Oh, uh, go ahead now. Ascribe to the horoscopes. Uh huh. That's right. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> back in my day, I'm about to date myself. When we were dating, we roll up. Hey, baby, I'm a Leo. What's your sign? <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. But we read the horoscope, and if the horoscope tells a young lady that you about to find your future husband in this month at this time, they only get dressed and pretty and perfumed up and get it together for that month because they think that now this horoscope has told me I'm about to find my good thing in this month and this time. I'm not saying that the Bible tells us that he that find the wife find it the good thing. But watch this. You are a wife before your husband finds you. You are already. Others, but not with this at our own. That time should be 
respect. Say, Lord, make me a better person. Please. Show me who I am. Yes, Lord. Show me how to make that perfect picture every picture. Yeah. <laughs> Let me move on. God is still in control. I'm almost there. God is still in control. The scripture tells us in Isaiah 40, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. It says, have you not known? Mm -hmm. Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is your God. This is my God. The one that's in control of everything. But sometimes... We as people need to make sense out of life. Yeah. Anybody ever wanted God to bring clarity yes. to what you were going through? You, you don't want to just be flowing through. You say, God, make sense out of life. Make it make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because things making sense to us keep us from being weary and well doing. Yeah. Like if it makes sense to you, you won't get as tired than if it didn't make sense to you. Because you can see the end in sight. Sometimes we have to move by revelation and not by rationalization. Amen. Because some things that happen to us are just not rational. Yeah. Anybody ever gone through a strange storm? Mm. Anybody ever gone through a storm that made no rational sense? Mm. But once you get a revelation about your situation, you will bless God anyway. That's right. Once you get a revelation that he'll never leave or forsake you, but will be with you always, even until the ends of the world, you'll bless God anyway. Once you understand that God has not left, and things happen that just will not make sense sometimes. Let me show you. God could have hardened Saul's, could have softened Saul's heart when he was chasing after Christians before he got to Damascus. Before the road to, y'all know the story on the road to Damascus, he fell off of his, his horse and the Lord showed himself for him. God, at, at that point, he had already brought Christians into prison and killed Christians for who they were. So God could have stopped him before that place. But God had a purpose for Brother Saul. Watch this. God had a purpose for Ananias that was waiting on him in Damascus. Because Ananias began to tell God what he heard about Saul when God told him to be prepared. And he began to tell God what I heard. Saul was killing Christians and putting Christians in prison. I heard he was a bad man. Yeah. Anybody ever told God what you heard? Yeah. Yeah. Ananias was really operating under a threat that no longer existed. He was judging Saul by the old Saul, but nobody came and gave him an update of what, what God did in Saul. So now when you roll up on the scene, all they see is the old bad tail Octavius. They don't know that God has done a work in bad tail Octavius. They don't know that God has done such a work that he has the same body frame. His eyes are the same color, but there's a different person on the inside. And they walk around telling God what they heard about bad tail Octavius. Until God has to turn around and say, he prays now. He prays now. He's a new person. Now Elder Paul walks up on the scene. The people he was in the military with and did what he did, how he did, when he did, how he wanted to do it. But nobody gave them the update that he's an elder now. Nobody gave them the update that he has increased in lives. Nobody gave him the update that God sent him his good thing.
Yeah. That when God does something, God is so in control that when he does a new thing, he sits back and watches how it plays out in the eyes and the minds of your critics. God ain't sitting in no update of what he's done in your life. God is not interested in proving the critics wrong. God just touches you, spins you around and says, now walk before me and be thy perfect. And I admonish you not to try to prove your critics wrong. Right, Let the fruit speak for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Let God arise and his Oh, y'all heard it before. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. So now Brother Shanti rolls up on the scene. Be quiet. Don't talk a whole lot, but he got a pass. Got places where he's been, things that he's done. And now when he rolls up on the scene, they don't know that he loves the Lord now. They don't know that his mind, the furniture in his mind has been so rearranged until he surprises himself with how he thinks. They don't know that he has an insatiable hunger and thirst for the Lord and so much until he thinks he's going crazy sometimes. They don't know that God touched him in such a way until he was healed from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. They don't know that people in his circle, uh, that they don't know who he is and they don't understand what God is doing. Uh, so now they're telling God what they heard about old Ashanti. Uh, but they don't know his name was not even Ashanti anymore. Uh, it's the blessing of the Lord. Uh, it's highly favored. Uh, it's the abundance of God. Uh, it's a millionaire in the making. Uh, Oh, 
control. Yes, yeah. it is. Real quick, I need to tell about three people. It's not too late. 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 It's never too late. I know the devil told you it's too late, but it, it's never, it's never, it's never too late. Yeah. One of the things we do in the church is we give people an excuse for being out there. Oh, they old, they ain't got no filter, they can't change at this point. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Y'all heard your brother's testimony. Amen. That's right. Amen. Never too late to change. Never too late. Everybody can do better than what they're doing Amen. at any given Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. We were there. We have already ascended to the climax or the apex of our Christian walk. Then it's time for the Lord to come on and take us home. Amen. Come to the place where you can't hear somebody and say, I got to do better, or just have the internal fortitude to want to do better, then it's time for the Lord to come and get you. Right? That's right. right? Amen. But we all can get to a better place because God said to me, because God is still in control. I had another point that God is still God, but that's evident at this point. God is still God. He's still in control. But I feel a strange sensation to, to stop right there at that last point. The family, the family part, the family part. Because oftentimes we're praying for our harvest and our season and our blessing and our miracle, but we're not praying for our family, the well-being and the health of our family and our loved ones, which is essentially the first line of defense when the enemy wants to come against who you are. It's the family. It's the family. So I want to open up the altar. I want to open up the altar. Anybody? If the sermon touched you, the word touched you, you just want to come down and touch and agree, then the altar is open for you. If you want salvation today, you want to be saved, the altar is open for you. But what I'm looking for is those who are praying for your family. Or perhaps something I said touched you personally, and you want to bring you and your family down to this altar down to this altar. It's down at the altar where things change. It's down at the altar where God moves, heals, delivers, and sets. It's down at the altar where things are broken. It's down at the altar. It's down at the altar. Family matters even if you have family matters. Family means something to God. It means something to God. And you could be praying for a distant family. It may not be your, your, your mama or your dad or your sister or your brother. But perhaps you're praying for those in your bloodline. Family. It matters. God will have your family made whole. He will have your bloodline healed. I'm talking about you will have your bloodline fixed. You will have your bloodline made new. Because he's still God. He's still in control. He still has a tendency to heal, deliver, provide, and set free. There is no God like our God. There is no God quite like you.
tell nobody. In fact, do whatever you're here for, you can go on and start giving it to the Lord right now. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. It's not my business. I got to stand out there with my own family. But whatever you need, just start talking to the Lord now. Just, just begin to thank God for doing it. Thank you for fixing my family. Thank you for bringing my child. Thank you for saving my baby. Thank you for making the situation better. Thank you for healing my marriage. Thank you for saving my children. Thank you for delivering my bloodline. I just want to thank you, God. I have the crazy faith to believe that if I send the seeds of prayer up, God, that you will manifest the harvest in their life, God. They may be hundreds of miles away, but I stand in a gap and in a seed. I tell them the book. In a seed on their behalf right now, God. And whatever
offering, offering time. I'm sorry. Sit back down. Praise God. Oh. Can they hear all the way up? Do you want to have a little bit of it? It's offering time. I'm about to let y'all go. Yeah. Real quick, if you give, it will be given unto you in good measure. Press it down, shake it together, and run it over with me and give them to your bosoms. So as we prepare to be here today, let's be cheerful giving, because God loves a cheerful giving, not grudging me or of necessity, but thankful unto the Lord, because all things came from the Lord and of His own. I will give it back to you. Just pay attention to your usher's name. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 